Hello and welcome to Loghouse Farm. Today we're going to be talking about raised beds. But it all starts more than a year ago when I tore down our old chicken coop. We had built a better one. A video on that soon. Most of the wood from the old coop was still good, so I used it to make a greenhouse. The side effect of having this large greenhouse is now we have a lot of plants that will need a place to grow outside. Having the greenhouse allows us to plant a little earlier in the season, so we have many plants that need a place to live. Some plants, like tomatoes and peppers, will remain in the greenhouse, but most would need to have a spot outside. In our area, it can be a little challenging to plant a garden. We have a lot of deer, and they love to eat our freshly planted garden. We also have some wild rabbits, and our chickens to consider. So we need a space that's fenced off, so none of these critters can munch on our veggies. So we have a list of problems to solve, now we need solutions for these problems. And we had to think of what we wanted in our raised beds. So we needed to keep out the grazers, who would eat all of our hard work. We wanted less bending over and stooping for planting and weeding. And if possible, less frequent watering. Also wanted something easy to mow around. And we wanted to keep the cost low, of course. We do have an old raised bed or two, but they're too low. And now that we have some new ones, we can remove those old ones. They're rarely used anyway. The old ones were just too low to the ground and were rough on the back when planting and weeding. For our new garden beds, we wanted something much higher up. So we weren't bending over so much to maintain the garden. The benefit of using the raised beds is that there are fewer weeds to deal with. But over time, there will be weeds. We also wanted the beds to be quite large, since we had so many plants in the greenhouse that needed a home. A large bed will have to be very strong if it's to hold all that dirt. I had an idea for something that was made from construction lumber. That would keep the cost down, and the 2x4s should be strong enough to handle the large amount of dirt that the beds will have in them. Not too long ago, we added a little fenced off area so that we could plant a new peach tree. Something to keep the deer from eating the fresh new tree. And after taking some measurements, I settled on a width for the raised beds, or at least a rough width. It didn't have to be too precise. I had to make sure that the mower could get in the fenced area and pass both sides of the raised beds once they're in place. I recently purchased a new pocket hole jig, and I thought maybe there was a way I could use it on this project. With all the previously mentioned things considered, I planned out the beds in my head. Often I'll use SketchUp or a pen and paper for planning, but this one seemed really simple, so I just got started. Of course, doing it this way always leaves room for errors. I cut the legs to three feet. I figured that would be tall enough so that you would not have to bend too far when planting and weeding. The length of the bed would end up being about 8 feet 6 inches. Because I attached the 8 foot 2x4s flush to the 3 foot board that I had cut, I got a little excited with the pocket hole jig and drilled holes into the legs when I only needed them on the 8 foot boards. By the end of this project, I had done plenty of pocket holes. I really could use some dust collection. For now, I'm just sweeping it onto the floor. Oh, there's the cat. I also cut the sideboards three feet, since I had already set up the stop block for the leg cuts. And those three foot boards attached to the leg would make the width around three feet, nine inches. That should leave plenty of room for the mower once these are in place. Once I had all the pocket holes done and the four sides assembled, I took them out front to take a good look at them and tack them together to make sure everything looks okay. Everything looked like it'll fit. So I cut some cross supports to fit along the bottom and used the table saw to cut a floor. I used some OSB from that old chicken coop that I ripped down. 
Now it's time to move all the pieces to the location. Once again, the John Deere and the trailer come in real handy. It was a lot to fit in the trailer, and it was pretty heavy. But I just drove slow and kept an eye on the load to make sure nothing was about to fall off. I decided I should mow this area before setting up. With that all mowed, we're ready to set this up in its new home. With everything cut and mostly assembled, added some protection to the wood. I just used the stuff that we use on the logs for the house, so that should be pretty decent protection for the raised beds. These are fairly cheap to make, and I don't expect any raised bed to last all that long, but we should be able to get quite a few years out of these. Once it was all put together, I lined it with an old tarp. Now this old tarp has several holes, so it already has its own built-in drainage. It wasn't until I had the tarp on that I realized that the ends had the pocket holes facing out. And I was not about to pull all that apart for a little bit of aesthetics. So that's how it's going to stay. Hopefully the next one goes a little better. I am going to be building two of these. We filled the bottom quarter of the bed with yard scraps and what we had cleaned out from the chicken coop. Then filled in the rest with dirt. Most of this build was fairly cheap because we used construction lumber, but we did make sure to get some very nice soil. We picked up two yards from a local supplier and the dirt is proving to be worth the extra cost. I also added something to mount string or mesh to for plants that need support like tomatoes or sweet peas. These are quite easy to add after and can be added or removed whenever needed depending on where you place your plants. Now it's time to add some plants to the beds. We did a lot of vegetables but we also put some companion plants in. Some of these plants will attract bugs away from the veggies and others will attract beneficial bugs. Now here's a list of what we planted in each of the beds. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.